Okay, so before we get into the presentation, last week we were discussing interest rates, the war in Ukraine, and all things financial. Today, we are adjusting the tone to aspects in our life that we can control, or better yet, gain more control. Personally, I live uh, an active lifestyle with a young daughter, and I, and I think the same applies to Ken living a very active lifestyle as well. And this session is to serve to promote the benefits of an active lifestyle. So today, we're going to have a conversation with Yvonne about the importance of investing in one's health and how that can maximize one's quality of life, along with sharing some practical strategies that can implement uh, to increase the ability for you to focus and maximize your profits of strengthening your overall well-being. Before we dive in, I'm going to introduce Avon to you. Uh, Avon, please tell our guest today a little bit about yourself as we start the presentation. Well, thank you, Michael and Cameron. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. I'm uh, happy to have this conversation. I hope our virtual guests come away with something of value. Before I go into who I am and what I do, uh, I would kind of give you guys a little bit of a story, a journey of what I have been through. I grew up overweight, but fitness has allowed me to change my life for the better and kind of allowed me to be successful in order to enjoy all the benefits of life. And over the years, fitness and health have become a big part of my identity. And I've competed in Tough Mudder races all across Ontario. I have Bike throughout Spain, I have hiked Machu Picchu, the Dolomites, I have even rock climbed in France and Austria, just to name a few. So in doing so, I learned firsthand the core values of teamwork, and I realized the importance of trust and communications in building successful long-term relationships. This led me to a career in fitness, and I have made it my mission now to really improve the quality of people's lives by changing their habits and allowing them to thrive through fitness and health so they can make the most out of their life and live the best life possible. And I approach this in two ways. First, as a lifestyle and movement coach, I work with business professionals to maximize their potential by increasing their strength and uh, energy so they have greater ability to focus on achieving success in both their professional and personal lives. Secondly, I also am a fitness professional with the Faculty of Kinesiology at the University of Toronto. I teach and work with faculty, um, um, faculty students and elite athletes to help develop and improve the performance. I've also worked with elite athletes on the national level. The onset of COVID uh, coupled with the advancement of technology uh, has changed both the work and fitness landscape. And for me personally, this means I've trained uh, and taught virtually at U of T over the past two years. And it's allowed me to pivot and provide clients both with in-person and virtual training options. And so I've had over a decade experience, international experience, uh, working both in North America and in Europe. I'm not a stranger to this type of audience. And I've worked with actually an RBC client uh, and I've helped him sort of transition from work into retirement. So uh, thank you Yvonne for your introduction. I hope to climb some of those mountains one day but maybe I'll start with running hills at yes. High Park. <laughs> we have to start somewhere. So with that said, when we were planning for our discussion today, you wanted to implement a quote from an ancient Roman, um, as on our slide deck today. So why is that relevant in 2022? It's a good question. Um, there are things in life that are timeless, and these concepts I'm going to mention today or talk about today are not new. And I feel this quote by the Roman uh, writer Juvenal from the first century of the mod of the Common Era is even more relevant today than ever before. And as he wrote, men's sana in corpore sano, which translates in, into a healthy mind and a healthy body. So a healthy mind cannot work to its full potential without a healthy body. Being healthy and fitter, both physically and mentally, will help you deal with life's unexpected surprises. And in order to do that, 
You need to take ownership of your own health. What are your thoughts about that, Michael? Well, without providing any uh, specific names, I was actually having a discussion with a client who RSVP to this event. So she is a, a grandmother. Uh, she still is working. And she told me that she started going for regular physiotherapy appointments, um, despite there not being any underlying health reasons to do so. Uh, she combined that with yoga and trying to be outside every single day, regardless of the weather. And that's helped her feel the best she's had, the best in her life, she basically said. And I asked her, well, if it's snowing outside at minus 20, are you still outside? And she said to me, there's no bad weather, just bad clothing. So that stuck with me that if we're in a rut inside, we just have to be prepared for the elements and that could be uh, you know, applied to anything uh, in life. So from my point of view, she clearly had uh, a purpose to do yoga, to be outside, and that's to be with her, her grandchildren and have that lifestyle of being active with them. So that's the, the important lesson here where she, went out, sought advice from friends, from family, from some of her trainers now, and you know, as basically putting this presentation to life. Mm -hmm. So Avon, you said you recently helped someone from RBC. If you're able to share that story, sure. do you mind telling sure. us? First, that's an awesome story. I think it's really relevant for the audience listening. Um, my story, and I would love to share it because it's dear to my heart. Um, Enrico was a senior lawyer at RBC uh, for almost 30 years, and, but he came to me complaining of a shoulder, kind of chronic shoulder discomfort or pain. And he was entering his final few years of, of work and wanted to enjoy his retirement, right? And he, however, he had this chronic pain, and which is kind of, he couldn't focus on, on himself, on his work, and so for him, it affected his quality of life. His sleep was affected, his energy levels were down, so after kind of having the kind of a couple of assessments or movement screens, I noticed that I saw his shoulder was blocked. And so after kind of working together, integrating new movement patterns, uh, within a few months, he, his shoulder pain went away, right? He was able to now uh, work with me over the years and he's actually built up a strong foundation and fitness became a part of his identity, which is a big part because this actually proved to be very instrumental. And the reason for I say that is because uh, a few years later, after we worked together, still working together, he had a freak accident. He went down the side of flight of stairs and broke his heel. And for him, given his strong foundation, he was able to build or lean on that and bounce back a lot faster than someone else who didn't develop their, that foundation, that, that real foundation to have the strength and the endurance to do things on his own. And so he developed his strength in his arms, uh, the one that like, he actually had mobile that like he use. he used that uh, to continue being independent, right? And for him, that was important because it allowed him to remain active and not be a liability for others. He wanted to be on his own and spend time with his partner, enjoy time with his friends, and didn't want to be left out. So that was a big part. Thanks, Yvonne. So, we are doing this virtually. We would love to have people and do this live, but you know, we tend to bring it back to what COVID has changed in our lives. And it's very relevant to this call. So uh, Avon, you know, this global pandemic restricted our daily life. Uh, couldn't go to parks, things were closed. We couldn't be six feet next to people with social distancing. That's all kind of been lifted in the, in the past recent, uh, in the recent months. However, with or without COVID, in your experience, Yvonne, is it COVID that sparked a reduction in general activity in your work professionally and at U of T? Or did this highlight some aspects of our own health and our behaviors that maybe weren't prioritized before COVID and just got you know, accentuated that much more during COVID? Mm -hmm. So my question to you, um, which actually came from some uh, participants as well, is what are you seeing in the faculty of kinesiology at U of T with your colleagues and also in the real world with your clients? Um, well, to be honest, Michael and Cameron, uh, health and being active has always been a global struggle, right? Working at U of T and with my clients, inactivity, chronic disease like obesity and diabetes has 
aren't just local issues. These are a global issues that everyone's dealing with. And I think COVID has made people understand and realize the importance of reprioritizing their health, physically and mentally, so they can first be better themselves, and secondly, be there for others for things that matter. And virtually every person living in Canada and around the world experienced a tremendously difficult past two years, right? And with the onset of the pandemic, ways to stay active and focus on our health fell to the bottom of our list of priorities, depending on our own personal situations. And the stats are up, and they're not pretty, but there's hope. I have hope. Harvard has done, Harvard has done the research, showing that almost half the population has gained weight since the beginning of COVID. And out of that half, 12% have gained over 12 pounds. And I'm sure a lot of people here in this audience here today have felt the negative effects of COVID personally in some capacity, in some way. And we are, we, are different, we are living differently than we even did a generation ago. We spend more time sedentary, whether it's in front of our screens, right, on our mobile devices, on television, uh, on our computer, or just sitting in front of our desk, right? Uh, this accumulates to about 10 hours of each day of sitting down, more than half of our waking day. And over the past two years, those who are able to work from home had to go through a drastic transformation, right? Many people have significantly decreased their commuting. I'm not sure you guys, you probably maybe have also now slowly got back into commuting, but back then, active transportation to and from work was not there, right? Those active breaks uh, between walking between meetings, getting off the chair, next meeting room, uh, going for coffee runs, um, was, uh, were replaced by Zoom after Zoom after Zoom meetings. That it also affects you not just physically, but mentally as well, because you're not getting that mental break. 100%, right? You kind of just Zoom one session, right away you have a Zoom session, there's no, no more break. We're trying to minimize that downtime. But before, you had to. Yeah. You went for a while, at least for a washing break at least, I would hope. <laughs> just to yeah. be at peace for a little bit. Right. So now it's just 9 o'clock's done, 9, 10, 10 and boom, you're kind of just constantly going from Zoom to Zoom to Zoom. And so Health Canada's national guidelines recommend that we as adults get at least 20 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity daily. But even with this modest recommendation, it's only achieved by 16% of the population, right? So this lack of, an, of, of activity is costing Canadians 68 billion in direct health care costs and 122 billion in productivity loss annually. That's huge. Ivan, mean, what's an example of, of, of moderate physical activity? What would you say? It's a good question. Uh, it could be a brisk walk. Now, we'll get to some examples momentarily. So, if you can, yeah, I'll, I'll go through some more examples sure. for the audience as well. But, example quickly there would be a, a brisk walk where you kind of have a little bit of higher, higher heart rate and you're kind of breathing a little heavier. It's a good example right off the bat. Um, again, from a corporate perspective, right, this loss, uh, direct cost, a loss of cost, is that when we are overstressed, right, and tired, this negatively impacts our relationships, our creativity, and productivity. And along with that, absenteeism and presenteeism increases. So the same whole truth for in individuals like yourself. So maybe you can't run your business or your personal life because you're at, in the hospital bed or at home, bedridden. So I'm sure you guys heard of, heard of the uh, Pareto Principle, and studies have, studies have shown that lifestyle choices represent 80% of an individual's health outcome. This means we have more control than we may have previously thought about how we age in life. And so you've all worked hard in your professional careers, always pushing boundaries, Engaging in 20 minutes of physical activity daily will help ensure that you reap the benefits of all your hard work. And I'm not asking you to come climb Mount Everest with that option, right? At a minimum, at a minimum, I'm talking about, about a brisk walk with your partner or a bike ride with your, with your kids. If you're doing that already, that's great. We all know the price of gas these days. Walking will not only make you healthier, but also save you money. And being fit no longer means going to the gym, which is the best part. It can be done anywhere at any time, just like work is no, no longer primarily at the office. 
So keep in mind that being active looks different for everyone as it is a unique to their particular situation. So being proactive, um, before we make any sort of quick changes to our health, we need to better understand our current situation, right? Build awareness from that current situation and then plan accordingly to what we want to plan for, the, for uh, what lies ahead. And one way we can approach this is by looking at a few things that we can actually control. And the first thing is becoming aware of our environment, as you see here on the slides, right? Try to look what's around us. What distractions, temptations, deterrents do we have around us? Number two, understand your, your time allocations, right? Where am I spending the majority of my time throughout the day? Where can I potentially improve upon or readjust to be a little bit more active and engage in more healthy behaviors? Number three here, why do you do what you do, right? What is the purpose, asking yourself, what is the purpose of your life? What satisfies you? What impact do you want to have on others? What legacy do you want to leave behind? And finally here, number four, are there people around you that are supporting you or holding you back? And so you need to make an honest assessment of those people and who they are and if they're holding you back or are they adding value in your life? Avon, thank you for diving into those points. So from what I gather, what you just spoke about in these four slides, you introduced the idea of having a plan or being, becoming aware, understanding your time, what's your purpose behind planning that time, and ultimately your support system around you. So to us as, uh, as advisors, this relates to uh, a financial plan where a financial plan holds an investment portfolio together because this focuses actually on a client's real rate of return required for their specific situation. That's why no two plans are the same. So of course we're gonna have COVID impact how we work out. Of course COVID's gonna impact our investments, but what are we doing today that's gonna impact you know, two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, we need to keep that longer term story uh, you know, present. Or not just in and now for the future exactly like, so like financially but in health right? yeah I, I i think that's the the case because you know we're not going to speak about financial planning here anymore but it just there was a you know a common theme there so i'll bring it back to you um can you speak a little about what a health plan is to you in your profession and you know for myself maybe cam you know i've looked on you know youtube and searched nutrition plans, I also myself, workout so. videos, I have Peloton app on my phone, is like there's a way of keeping it simple as individuals, yeah. but, but clearly a lot of these things are geared towards a specific audience, and that audience may not be me, it may not be Cam, it may not be you, so I, you know, I'll, again, I'm going to turn it back to you speaking about what it mean to, you know, work with a health plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be, um, it can be really overwhelming. overwhelming. For sure. Because we're hearing it from everywhere. A lot of, a lot of noise. And a lot of noise. And a lot sometimes of noise. too much noise too much. leads to inaction. No action. Yeah. Exactly. So, again, I hear this all the time, to be honest. I hear this all the time. And you can Google pretty much anything these days and arrive at something. <laughs> and what the question becomes, is it specific to your unique lifestyle? And right now, let's keep our right now. And is it the most effective way to get to your goals? Most likely not, right? Uh, that being said, um, what if we could make specific adjustments to your particular situation, right? That's the most sort of meaningful for you. It has an impact for you personally. And something I do for my clients, and I want to try with you guys uh, here at the audience today, and you guys as well, is to help you begin with the end in mind. And one way I do that is through visualization. So, which can be a very powerful tool. So, I would like everyone here to participate. If you uh, can trust me here, close your eyes for a moment. I should close my eyes too. Yes, uh, you too, Michael and camera, close your eyes. I want you all to right now just visualize yourself at 80 years old, sitting in your favorite chair, enjoying your favorite beverage, listening to your favorite song. And I want you to ask yourself, 
what will bring a smile to my face this moment? I think most of us will say being able to spend time with my partner, my brother or sister, my son or daughter, to have a conversation with my nephew or niece. I was going to say to get, be able to get out of the chair. Get out of the chair, <laughs> get in there. Oh. Ride, ride a bicycle with my grandchild. Go on a walk with my best friend. Get off a chair and walk up and down instead of stairs without feeling winded, needing assistance or experiencing pain. Wake up with energy, feeling radiant, at peace, and still having a purpose in life. Being 80, you are potentially entering the best years of your life. A new decade, potentially for full of growth, experiences, and development. What greater feeling would it be to be independent and not a liability to others, maybe even helping others? That is what life is all about. You can open your eyes now. Uh, and I'm assuming most of you didn't even think about your wealth. Uh, this goes to show you that wealth is not the real objective here. Yes, don't get me wrong, it's really important. It's what keeps things moving, right? We need it. But it isn't the purpose or meaning of our lives. And unlike being able to trade in our cars, buy a new house, get other material possessions, we can't trade in our bodies, right? It's, we have one and it's with us till the end. And you need to cherish, to cherish this one vessel you have if you want to get the most out of your life. But many people do not consciously recognize that health is an investment, uh, an assessment, uh, sorry, an asset that needs to be cultivated. Right? We all brush our teeth, I hope, and shower. That's a given. But how many of us spend 20 minutes on ourselves daily? Right? Just spending 20 minutes on our physical well-being can have a cascading effect on every other aspect of our life. And so for the same reason you are using a professional to help you with your financial plan or financial health, you should also consider using outside expertise for your personal health. A balanced financial portfolio, which, which kind of reflects core things like equity, bonds, cash, are similar to a balanced physical health portfolio, if I may use the same analogy, uh, should reflect activity, nutrition, proper recovery, which includes mindfulness, which includes sleep, which is often overlooked, those two components. So a simple investment could be an extra long walk on the weekend, or a hot, hot bath, or one personal training session a week. Simple as that. Much like building financial freedom doesn't occur overnight, nor does your physical health. Right? Both are long-term investments that are really important. So small actions that don't seem to have big yields are actually really powerful. So small behaviors that you invest each day create this sort of major compound interest over the years. So don't discount these small, uh, seemingly these small first steps, right? And you will be pleasantly surprised and maybe even shocked on how much progress you've, you've done over a short period of time. So I want to talk here a little bit about, uh, it's important looking at how we sort of change our mindset to start being more proactive rather than reactive. Keep in mind, it's never too late to start, right? I approach working with clients from a holistic perspective. And physical fitness is just one piece of that pie, right? And I may not actually start there. Depends on my client situation. If they're coming to me, they want to improve their health, I have to look at their whole pie and see which pie am I gonna look into that has the most effect, potential effect, on changing their health. So Vaughn, that, that was based on a point that Ken brought up earlier about, about mental health. That for sure. actually could start from there versus physical. the physical health. Exactly, and that could actually be a casting effect, right? If I start with mental, that can actually improve my physical, vice versa, yeah. and usually that's what happens. Yeah. Um, and so I want you guys to think about your health as having volume knobs, right? Instead of a play and pause. So movement, nutrition, sleep, stress, social aspects of your life, they have a dial, this knob. And so it is my job, right, working alongside my clients to help them just keep making progress because even when life gets crazy, you gotta keep making progress. You gotta keep pushing yourself a little bit forward. And together, working with clients, we figure out which dials do we turn up and then which tiles we turn down. So sometimes you've got to turn it down, which is also 
just as important. And instead of actually an all-nothing approach, we want to approach it into always something, right? And this is why you should never press pause on your health and fitness. Just we need to work on dialing up or dialing it down based on your day. Not what I'm looking into the future. We're looking at day-to-day -day dial changes. And one thing for sure, you can't be going at 100% every day. It's not sustainable. So this is where you, having that trust and that communication with your health advisors uh, becomes very important when deciding to make changes to your lifestyle. So we all know the importance of, of having a diverse um, approach to our portfolios, right? This concept is essential when it comes to investing in your health the same way, because it is prudent that you are using a right mix of habits and strategy that are actually tailored to your specific needs. And not everyone here defines themselves today by their career, right? There is a whole life outside the job that is incredibly important, I think. And a part of what I do is help people realize that and improve their quality of life through movement and a change in lifestyle. And with my background expertise, we, I work with my clients collaboratively to find the best approach for their needs and their unique situation. So what I'm gathering when we, I started off talking about YouTube and you know, self-help apps, they can all work, but they will only provide you with general recommendations that aren't necessarily specific or relevant to each of us or the audience that they're speaking to. Uh, so in reality, like you said, the answer will be nuanced. Change is the only constant when dealing with these dials that you brought up as a term. I, I, I might use that analogy going forward. But like investing, you know, we, we have to look to adapt portfolio short term, long term. So this is a collaboration that we also have with our clients on an ongoing basis. So that actually keeps not only our clients engaged, but also the process along the way is what's important uh, too. And the purpose, like you said, of you know, the things that we visualize uh, and that's not necessarily you know buying a new home, but it's who we're spending time in our home with. So, uh, but on that note, uh, can you speak about some of the habits or some of the things you've identified or specific health strategies that our uh, guests today uh, could implement or start thinking about? Yeah, 100%. I'm glad to have, have, have share with you my my knowledge and what I've worked with my clients over the years. But if I was a guessing man, most of the audience here spends time checking their financial health daily, right? So why not make the same investment when it comes to your health and your, and your personal well-being? So our current healthcare system is reversed, right? They wait till we get sick, then we can see treatment. It's reactive. And like Michael said, we, if we don't keep our health plan up to date on a daily basis, we, we, we may wonder, how do we get here in this spot? How do we get in this tough spot? How do I come here? Like, what happened? And we need to take this a proactive approach in order to avoid it from happening. And one, way, one great way to do that is engaging in 20 minutes of physical activity daily. And so a few suggestions I would, I would recommend for you guys to start, for those listening, is belly breathing, which I'll kind of show later on as well. Drinking some more water, improving quality of sleep, Right? eating more vegetables, reducing your alcohol and caffeine intake. For some of us, a stress relief involves a glass of wine after work. But there are simpler and healthier options such as breathing, right? going out in nature for a walk, or sweating out in the sauna. Right? When it comes to fitness and health, the problem I see that most people run into is that they rely on, on willpower to help them achieve these goals. Right? Let's go, like, they tell themselves, okay, I really need I really need to eat more vegetables. I gotta get to the gym. You probably hear it all the time. I need to take a break. But then within two to three months, it's all back to the old habits because of this willpower. And so what if, what if I told you that willpower isn't all that you needed? In fact, what if I what if you actually didn't need willpower at all? And as it turns out, 
willpower is far from the positive solution as we all see it is or as. It doesn't always work. And what's more, we often run out of it sooner rather than later. So if it can be thought of as, as a mental strength and energy, it's just like physical strength, right? It can be built up willpower, but can also be depleted. And this is why trying to commit to drastic changes all at once and relying on willpower will not work. And on top of that, willpower only works when motivation is super high, right? I'm ready to go. But so basically that's kind of when you start your, your new goals. But once you come across more temptations, more and more temptations that work against your goals, but for example, free pizza at the office, or it's going to be two drinks after work, or it's going to be whatever it is, your willpower will begin to dissipate. And plus, these temptations are everywhere these days. Doesn't matter where you turn, you're seeing them. We're constantly swimming upstream, constantly, right? Trying, trying to go past this water. And the bottom line here is that while willpower can certainly play a role in helping our goals and and reaching them, at least when we're highly motivated, it isn't enough on its own, right? Self-control isn't the answer here. Instead, there are a few strategies where you can use to better achieve your goals, whatever those goals may be. And I'm gonna share with you four strategies that will help you cope with life, life's challenges. So the first one here is adjust your environment. And so what I often suggest for my clients is to look and see which distractions and temptations you can eliminate completely. Where can you automate good decisions and how can you eliminate options that make bad decisions at all? So for example, if you're trying to eat healthier, it's, a time, to, uh, it's time to toss those chips and cookies from the cupboards. <laughs> and instead of stocking with healthy items, you actually want to eat, not just celery and carrots. Like there are healthy options that you actually do want to eat and you can definitely do it properly. For example, if you look at your phone all the time, you want to reduce that, turn it off, put it in a different room, right? Or delete the most tempting apps that you use all the time. So the secret to self-control is spending your energy optimizing your environment rather than building up a new dose of willpower whenever you want to do something right. Because you need to make good habits obvious and bad habits invisible. And so that's a big, a big component. Number two, take a break. And I mean a real break. So when you go for a walk, actually go for a walk, right? You, and don't think about work. You'll come refreshed and more focused. If you don't give yourself a chance to rest and recharge, you will run out of this willpower. Right? You, just as your muscles need rest and recovery, so does your willpower. It needs to rest and recover. So especially with a world full of distractions, it's essential to schedule, schedule time away from it all. And so this next part here can apply for everyone, but just hear me out. Take a vacation, a real vacation, where you can unplug and disconnect. Or even just a day-long staycation somewhere peaceful. Research has shown that after spending a day out in nature and doing something you enjoy, willpower tends to replenish. And this doesn't just apply for taking a trip either, right? It's a break in taking it easy in another area of your life and by easing up on your ambitious goals. Back to the dial example, right? If I want to get something here, I'm going to have to turn on this dial first to go here. And so, for example, if you're trying to eat healthier, and, or save money, it's probably not the best time to start training for a triathlon, right? And you'll probably get frustrated and you're more likely going to end up failing because you can't train hard all the time, right? There is actually so much value in working in than always working out. And so what I want to do now, if everyone wants to join me for a quick little demonstration of what it actually feels like to take a real break. Okay, so something as simple as belly breathing. So I want you guys to focus on uh, the simple technique, putting one hand on your chest, one hand on your lower belly button, lower. Okay, what you're gonna do here is, I want you guys to focus on the hand that's on your belly button, not your chest. So the chest hand is motionless. 
And I want you guys to inhale through your nose and exhale. So we want to focus on one or two seconds inwards. Go ahead. And exhale for four seconds. You want to close your eyes, close your eyes. Three more times. Go ahead. Good. Inhaling here again. Go ahead. And exhaling. Final one here. Let's finish strong. Go. Awesome. Something as simple as that can reduce your cortisol levels, can relax your muscles, can ease the pressure, can make you refocus on what is important. And this, something like this could be difficult for some people, right? Really challenging. If you're not, in, you're not used to it, you're not present in the moment. So it takes some time. But if you begin to implement this strategy, right? It took us, what, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. If you can do that while sitting in a meeting, driving a car back home or on a call, you can begin to see this immediate lift of energy or this calmness to yourself and ability to manage stress. So that's number two. Number three here, let's keep moving. Revisit your why, right? This is important because if you've lost sight of your overarching goal, consider a time to reset, right? We have to remember why we really want to save money or why is working out important to us because you won't be nearly as motivated to do it. So one way to do that, which we did earlier, was practice visualization, right? Can help here. So essentially you can imagine in specific and real detail those bigger goals, right? This allows you to reprioritize your, your motivation to crystallize those, those goals again because they become very, very real and clear again, right? If you begin to do that, if you don't have imagination, download some pictures on Google, look at it visually, look at it and be like, yeah, that's what I want to be, right? Get yourself back in that mindset because you have to understand what, what gets you up in the morning, right? What is going to keep you going every day? If you have that, again, if you lost sight of that, take the time to revisit those goals at your own pace. Finally, probably the most important part, so listen up, your support team, right? This is, you probably heard of a lot of things, people saying, hey, Set up a due date, mark it in your calendar, like share your goal, you hear all these things all the time. I've heard it since day one in my job. And, but the real trick here is staying accountable is to have people alongside you, right? Supporting you along the way. Whatever your goal is, whatever you're doing, do it with people who you can actually get vulnerable with, right? Build that trust and communication because they're gonna hold you accountable and make a huge difference. And they can obviously be people you know, which is great, but if you can't rely on your own personal support team, you have RBC and you have myself to help you out. So keep in mind, every day won't be your best day and that's okay. Most important with all these strategies is that you need, you need to want to do them, right? Enjoy them as well and have fun because if you don't, it won't be sustainable. You don't need permission to have fun. You can get up right now and have some fun, right? Find what truly inspires you and go out and get it. Because in the end, we are the result of our behaviors, what we do on a daily basis, day in and day out. And so most of them without any thought or even conscious awareness, we just do them because that's what we do. For example, first thing in the morning, right? We get up in the morning, what is your routine? We all have a routine. Right? I'll probably check my phone. <laughs> so some of us are better than others, and that's okay. But do we check our phone, like Michael said? Or are we looking for water first? Are we looking for our breathing rate first? Are we checking into our see how we feel? Right? Versus just running places and doing things. So that's really important. And uh, I'm not sure you want to continue here? Yeah. Okay. So I can go into yeah, I can go into this next one here. It's finishing up. One way that we can make these permanent changes. To behaviors and habits is to change our identity. I mentioned earlier, my identity is fitness. My client Enrico at RBC, his identity became fitness. And it should be for you as well, in whatever form that looks like for you. And one way to do that, or to build your identity, is to look at it this way. So when it comes to building habits that are sustainable, James Clear, an author of Atomic Habits, stated very eloquently, 
that you, it's, it's the problem is not the which level you gotta work on, which level is better. There's no worse or better level. It's just the direction you take it and how you use it to your, to your specific unique situation. So the first layer is changing your outcome, right? This is concern about the results. I wanna lose weight, I wanna get a job, I wanna win a championship. Most goals are at this level. Layer two is changing the process, right? The level is concerned with your habits and your systems. These are really important, right? I'm gonna now implement a new routine at the gym. I'm going to declutter my desk to have a better space or workflow, right? Developing meditation practice. These are where the habits lay or your systems you lean on. Finally, number three, the, probably the deepest layer of this thing is the change in identity, right? This is where you begin to change your beliefs. Right? Change how you view the world, your lens, your perspective, right? And that's when you really begin to change your self-image, if you want. Change your judgments of yourself and others, right? This is where that level is super important. And, and many people begin by changing their habits, by focusing on what they want to achieve. This leads to outcome-based habits. But the alternative here is actually to build identity Based habits. I'll give you an example shortly. With this approach, we can start by focusing on who we wish to become. And so, for example, you want to lose weight. That's your, that's your thought process. Identity-based outcomes are going to be become the type of person who moves more every day. Right? If you become that person, I guarantee you, you're going to start losing weight. Next one, I want to become strong. Become the type of person who never misses a workout. It's not going to be an hour workout, it could be 10 minutes, but you never miss a workout. So you need to ask yourself, what identity do you want to become? Well, Avon, thank you. So to this point in the presentation, uh, especially the last one, we're, we're really happy to be honest with ourselves and those around us in the situation that we want to be in. And I say that because a, a lot of what you spoke about hit, home, hit homes hit homes for me, and I, I'm sure can resonate with our audience as well. So um, I even think back and during the pandemic when I got a new ergonomic chair because I had some lower back issues. I'm like, oh, this chair is going to fix it. No, it's a chair combined with other things that will make your lower back feel better. So um, at this point in the presentation, uh, we do have some questions uh, that came in. We're going to have a, a very brief Q&A uh, period and we'll end off with uh, some final hit home points if you want, Avon, because uh, we do have some time sure. uh, within the hour, but we'll try to keep it concise. So I'll pass it over to, to Ken uh, with some Q&A. Thank you, Mike. All right, Yvonne, I've got a, there's just a couple of sure. questions here. Um, first question is, uh, and you, you alluded to this a little bit in the, in the presentation earlier, how much of an impact has COVID had on your business? Um, and, and I guess in particular, what have you seen if, you're, if you've had a lot more clients coming to you uh, in the past two mm -hmm. years, kind of what have you seen then? Uh, what, what are the common threads? Well, to be honest, like people, when COVID happened, my business actually excelled because I think people began to realize that if I want to be with my family, I see them all the time and they're maybe active. I'm not as active as I want to be with them. So they began to realize or reprioritize that, hey, health is important. I have some time now because I'm not even not working at the moment or as much as I, I did before. Uh, at this time, maybe we're all locked in. What can I do to really put my, my health on the top? Maybe three points, right? So to that point, um, as a follow-up, uh, were you doing any virtual training before COVID? Like, was that part of your it, it was. Oh, it was. Okay. So I kind of was. I was lucky. I was fortunate because I already kind of built a system beforehand, and when COVID did happen, I was already um, able to onboard a lot more clients, fluid uh, in, a, in a fluid manner, because I had the system in, in place that was able to take in these clients. So other trainers and coaches, they were rushing around trying to go to people's houses and train here or uh, wherever they could, or not at all. Right. A lot of my colleagues had no work for almost a year. While well, I was able to forward think about this approach earlier and just happened to be a pandemic in 20, 2020, I was already ahead of the game in that sense. So that when clients did come to me, I would say, I can help you out. 
Great. Good. This, uh, this question came in from a client. Uh, he said, I'm in a good state right now, so why should I consider working with a coach or a trainer? That's a, that's a good question. I think a lot of times we, I think we believe that everyone, I hope everyone's unique, right? That's kind of what I perceive, everyone's unique. And the thing is that people don't maybe always realize that right now they're good. Right, they're 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 doing good things right now, but things do change. I mentioned before with more willpower and motivation, right? Those things fluctuate, and so maybe right now you're at a high, and that's great. Right, keep keep knowing that, but there will be a downside potentially down the road, and so can you potentially be proactive in your approaches so that when those times come, have the proper environment, have the proper support team, have that that goal revisited, right? If that's in place, and you're sure of those things then you're set. But maybe working alongside me or another fitness professional, they can help navigate those situations a lot more effectively and efficiently so that you are getting the best service possible that is unique to your particular situation. Um, it's, it's interesting because I think the, the key word in that question is think. I think I'm in a good state right now. So we may think we're in a good state. We may think mentally, physically, uh, we're tip top, but we yeah. don't really know, I suppose, sure. right? Yeah. And we don't really know how much better um, uh, we can be. Exactly, a lot of times we, we, we think we have everything in place, which, which might appear that way from our point of view, but then right. when we kind of have an outside perspective, you're like, no, this can even be better improved upon, right? Or let's, let's dial this one up a little bit, dial back here a little bit, because if you want to get this, we got to do this. Yeah. Uh, this next question, we've got time, right? Um, yeah. This next question, uh, I can certainly relate to uh, that came in from a client, which is, can you give me uh, three things to do to help sleep at night? Okay. <laughs> or, or maybe three things not to do to help sleep at night. So is this, the problem was falling asleep, getting to sleep was a problem. Okay. They, sleep didn't, they didn't elaborate. Sure. It's basically, well, I, I guess they can't fall asleep. It can go many ways, but I would first off the bat, back to my environment point is, adjust your, your nighttime routine. Like you have a morning routine, we should all have a nighttime routine. And it should look the same, pretty much day in and day out. Because if it doesn't, you can imagine how the body feels. It has to think about something different. And so if you can kind of have the proper surrounding and environment, that's gonna be huge. A simple thing could be, right? Just turn off your phone an hour before. I'm not seeing the phone anymore. I'm going to my book. Or it's uh, lights are out. My, my TV, TV is outside the bedroom. That's a big one. People love to watch their TV in the bedroom. Try to not have it in there. So you mentioned about working out, if I, sorry, sure. that you want to try to schedule things in your day. And I've heard about sleep to say, well, you know what, give yourself a range. Like if I want to have six hours of sleep and wake up by a certain time, well, if I go to bed at 11 and I'm up at five, that's six hours. Do you, do you try to schedule when you go to bed to gain that six hours if that's good works for you? Because some people might need Less than that or more than that? Yeah, it's so on the client's uh, lifestyle first and foremost. Like, yeah. they're going to be up early in the morning, so understanding more about the lifestyle the person okay. has will dictate that approach. And if you only have four hours, only have four hours. What can you do? Right, but I think of quality. Versus maybe up and down, going to the washroom, whatever it is, it's not quality four hours. They have a million things on their head. Yeah. Right, they're not falling asleep. So they're not going to fall asleep. That's not going to happen. I know that personally from a lot of clients. Exactly. <laughs> we, all, we all suffer from that, uh, some more frequently than So others. I find a, a, a great trick I've actually recently used for a lot of myself and my clients is trying to put your mind in another person's story, it could be fiction, but try to put your mind, before bedtime is key, that you're not thinking about your stuff anymore. You're thinking about the story. It's a one story thing versus a million here. That's really good effect. So I hope the audience can take away that point. All right, there's one more question here. Sure. Um, what is the difference between you as a lifestyle and movement coach versus someone else in the health and wellness industry? That's a, that's a good question. And, and, and I've been, like I said before, I've been doing this over a decade now. And I've done, I've pretty, pretty much done it from my childhood, to be honest, but didn't actually have formal training back then. Um, but with me, I approach it differently. And most, I'm not saying I'm not the only person who does this or the only person who does this, but 
I look at it from a holistic perspective. Like you mentioned before, we have these pies and different pieces of the pies. And so if we're looking at uh, fitness and only fitness, that's maybe just one eighth of the pie. And that's a great place to start. So don't, don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic place, but it isn't the only place. And when you put all your focus and energy in that thing, you're like, I'm not getting the results I want. Because the other seven are not clicking. Or you're not, you have not properly dialed, dialed down or dialed up that other part. So it's how you focus on all those things together. I help people guide them in that notion. So based on what they're currently doing and what they're currently under in their lifestyle, I say, hey, I know you want to do fitness right now, but given your situation, you don't have half an hour. You don't have even five minutes. Let's go mental. Let's go social. Let's find other ways of the pie that can add value to your fitness. And then overall health. All right, that's it for um, questions. If I don't know, somebody has a question uh, after the presentation, they can reach you directly. Yep, my, e my, my email is all just my, my name there, yvonne.miskiv.gmail.com, but you can either go on the website, see all that I offer, and I'll be happy to connect. Okay. And have a conversation. Super, very informative, thank you. You're welcome. Mike, closing thoughts? Yeah, Yvonne, thank you so much um, for joining us today. I think having this conversation was important given the, the state of uh, COVID that we're still dealing with in our lives and you know all the other negative influences that can impact our day to day. And it's really important just to take that two minutes to breathe and, and we really appreciate those insights. So, um, so once again, if there's any questions, you can reach out to myself, uh, Cam, or reach out to Yvonne uh, directly. We're here to uh, connect and uh, be sources of information. Thank you so much, and we look forward to having you at our next seminar event. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.